love it. Good to yeah. go. So tell, yeah, tell us a, okay. bit, a bit more of this travel tra- travel summit, 2024. The travel summit. The travel summit. Is the name, yeah. And it's uh, April 26th to 28th. It'll take place at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. It'll be our second edition, right? And it's all about... You know, we have speakers from all over Canada and the U.S. coming in to share the best tips for maximizing your points and learning how to travel better. Uh, But not also that, right? How to also unlock kind of more of a lifestyle of travel freedom using some of the techniques that we that we as a company, you know, promote and champion and just getting people into that mindset, right, of the, the world is yours to explore and it doesn't have to cost a fortune. There are many resources and tools and techniques that you can use to make it more accessible, make it more sustainable in the long term. Um, we're going to have elements that also discuss uh, real estate. You know, speakers on this podcast, Spencer and Ashley are good friends of mine, and they're going to be speaking about how they've leveraged real estate, for example, as well as points to be able to unlock a lifestyle of travel freedom. So that's a big theme of the event. I think a lot of the listeners might be interested. And um, Anthony, looking forward to seeing you there. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely. Anthony's going to be, Anthony's probably going to be lining up next week to get right. Yeah, 100%. (laughs) Once Anthony's in on something, he's in. I have full respect for the way he treats treats Mm -hmm. life. I've been living in the dark. I got to ask something. So there's this many people who are going to be presenters at this kind of conference. To me, travel points, until you came here and then Anthony pulled me aside and said, hey, Tom, you got to get into this. I always thought travel points were just this like little extra thing you kind of ignored, but every once in a while you check your balance and see and to see if you got like a free bag of chips on a flight or a free upgrade or something like that. Mm-hmm. But people are leveraging travel points to travel the world. Exactly. So I think that's how most people look at points, right? A little bit of an extra reward on the side, something that they might care about here and there and not pay full attention to day to day, but once you delve into the details, the community is, although it may be niche, it's very, very passionate. And so, yeah, there's, you know, we have about 25 speakers coming in from all over North America to really share their expertise uh, because there's all, there's all sorts of different ways to approach the game, right? Different strategies to leverage, uh, different approaches to how to open credit cards, maximize the credit card points you get, which programs to use and which types of experience you use your points to unlock, whether that's uh, you know, more destinations that you'd like to see, or you'd specifically like to travel on the world's best flights, stay at the world's best hotels. Basically, any type of travel you want to do, points can help you supercharge that. I got to I, I, I tell you what you made us do. And Anthony, you're, you're at fault of this as well. But I, I want to thank you guys both. Because the last time you were here, you made such an impact on Anthony. I ended up getting one of those American Expre- Express, is it the platinum card? Is that what it is? Platinum. Platinum, yeah. platinum a card. And cobalt. And... Uh, yeah, Aiden has the cobalt card. Got I it. think Carol now has the cobalt card, <laughs> my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a bonus on the Amex that if we spent, I think it was like, I don't know, $75,000 in the first three months, we got like 200,000 points. Does that sound does that sound something like you've seen before? Something along those lines, okay. yes. By the way, Ricky's reacting, that list sounds like it was a crap bonus. But anyway, that was a good... That was I a, think you did really well. You said 200,000 points, yeah, 75,000. Yeah, but it, I was now looking for things to spend money on. I just mm-hmm. wanted to see what happens with these points. You get you, you really want these points. So now I'm going around the last, I think, 15,000, because you had like 90 days or 120 days. Yes, yes. So the last 15,000, I'm literally going around and we use them for our... Our business so there are legitimate things to be buying so i was moving forward some push uh, some purchases just mm-hmm. so i can get these points yeah so that's a great great thing to point out that that is you know behavior that you might be tempted <laughs> into once you have <laughs> once you get into the credit cards i will say that was one of the probably the special offers for business owners um seventy five thousand dollars spend you know two hundred thousand points it tends to be that's definitely on the higher end um, consumer wise, you know, you've often got five thousand, ten thousand dollars spends for about seventy five thousand to a hundred thousand points. Uh, but the behavior of you know wanting to like push forward some spend, right? That can certainly happen. In this case, you've got business expenses, and that's totally fine. But for listeners, right, it is something to be aware of that you you have to have a plan for meeting the spend before you apply. Otherwise, you may just end up buying stuff you don't need, and that's you know not a direction we want people to go in, right? You have to kind of be prudent with these things as well. So you, at the travel summit, you mentioned there's going to be a bunch of different speakers talking about you know not just points and stuff. Are, are points like the main vehicle? that the travel community that you're a part of is using to travel or is it, are there a bunch of other hacks and stuff? Like is, is what, what's the main vehicle that people are using? I'd say points is definitely the main vehicle out of this overall theme of, uh, you know, travel hacks that people like to call it, right? That, that I would say that represents 
the major category of, of vehicles, right? Because we believe the best way to elevate your travel is indeed by understanding points and how everything works. And in addition to points, there's also credit card benefits, right? Things like the lounge access that you automatically get on your business platinum card. There's also things like uh, like status. You know, if you stay at a hotel enough or you, if, if you hold certain credit cards associated with that hotel, you get status, which means whenever you stay, you get upgrades and breakfast and and additional treatment like that. But points is the you know, the main way to kind of, uh, instead of paying cash or whatever the full price is for an experience, using points instead at a good value and getting it free or heavily discounted. Okay, so points are the main driver and basically nobody, you're not doing anything differently than you would originally, you just now have a credit card that's optimizing to capture as many of those points as possible. Mm -hmm. You're spending the money that you would have ordinarily spent, right? And spending it strategically on the right cards to capture as many points and then using those points to... Okay, so what are the best cards in Canada right now? There's probably, this is probably argued about, I would bet. Rowan, you want to take a crack at this? Yeah, so I would say... Come right uh, into the mic, Rowan, yeah. Yeah, so right now, hands down, I'd say the Cobalt's the strongest card uh, that you can get for everyday Canadians. Uh, they have very strong multipliers, and based on specific categories, such as your restaurant spending or your grocery spending, which, you know, for me as a 32-year-old, that's where a lot of my spending goes towards, uh, you're effectively getting five points per dollar. Uh, and that's the strongest earn rate that you can get. Uh, the next best card is going to be like your business platinum card, which you just signed up for. And that's because the base earn rate on that card is 1.25 versus a lot of the other cards you're going to just have one point per dollar. So even that extra 0.25, when it comes to the day to day, uh, it adds up over the course of the year, right? So that can, you know, increase the amount of points, your points balance at the end of the year by a substantial amount, depending on what your spend is. So I would say on the uh, American Express side, the Cobalt and the Business Platinum are going to be the top two. And then you always want a complimentary card. So a Visa, I like to get the TD Visa uh, Aeroplan or the CIBC Visa Aeroplan because those cards are very complimentary. You're going to be earning into a very strong points program, uh, which is the Aeroplan program. And uh, for those that don't accept American Express, you still have that Visa handy uh, to use and you get some nice benefits when you're flying Air Canada such as uh, free checked luggage and in and uh, I think priority boarding and you can that get kind priority of stuff. boarding as well as priority security so uh, in your wallet if you have two to three cards I would say those are the three that you want and it's going to cover a you know a a strong base. And you like the Aeroplan TD card versus the TD, because they have another card that, that I have, the TD travel card, yeah. which is an Aeroplan. And I personally like that just because it gave me freedom. And I ha I was I hated being locked into the Aeroplan system. But with Aeroplan, you, you like that one the best because it gets you the points, you get upgrades on Air Canada. And can you use the Aeroplan points in other ways, I guess? Yeah, they have that website where you can pick gifts and stuff. So essentially, there's a trade-off between freedom and flexibility, which is what you said you liked, and actual value that you get, right? Now, this is something important to understand. I think for a lot of people, um, you know, the, the, the banks all lean into the one that they're stronger at in the marketing, right? So if TD Classic Travel, which is the one you have, right? Business Travel Visa. That points program is indeed more flexible because you know, you can kind of use it on whatever travel you like, just booking through that TD portal. And obviously TD is going to say, oh, you know, choose the most flexible points program out there. But when you do that, the value you're getting for your points is usually fixed at a pretty low level. Whereas the thing about Aeroplan that we like and that really supercharges uh, the type of like uh, dream trips that people can unlock through Aeroplan is very much that, you know, there's going to be certain situations that you... Uh, may be able to redeem and may not be able to redeem, but when you can redeem, you actually get a far, far, far more value, right? Mm -hmm. You get business class, you get first class. And getting screwed for 15 years. <laughs> right, but, then, but in your case, you probably had an easier time with the whole thing because that does take a little bit of work. And you know, it does take a little bit of understanding of how the program works, spending time with finding the right flights that will actually give you that value. And that's kind of the result, you know, that's kind of why the whole community has built around it because people are seeking that value. What are the best tips? What are the best ways? That's kind of what we talk about. So is Aeroplan the best uh, points program in Canada? I would say yes, right? For us, we're all about maximizing the value of your points and getting outsized value for it. So unlocking experiences that uh, that you wouldn't normally pay for with cash, right? Let's take a live flat seat uh, across the across the ocean, a special trip, you know, a very nice five-star resort stay. For those types of experiences, Aeroplan is 
the best and basically the only real option for Canadians. If you're somebody who's, you know, more of a, I'd like to just be able to redeem for a low but, you know, consistent value anytime I want without having to think about much, then uh, something like, you know, TD Rewards or Cashback might be the better bet. But for us, it's all about, you know, we're on this Your Life, Your Terms podcast. We're all about unlocking those special experiences, really uh, making travel uh, more of a, yeah, more of a special thing to, to enjoy. So, so, so even with your Amex points, are you transferring them to Aeroplan points to then use? I would say a lot of the time, yes. Uh, I, I do transfer them to Aeroplan. There have been certain situations where I'll transfer them to a different partner, uh, but I largely keep them parked in, as an American Express membership rewards points because it gives me that flexibility to transfer depending on the redemption that I want to make. Uh, and sorry, who can you transfer to? You can transfer to Aeroplan and there's a whole bunch of other people you can transfer to? Yeah, so for hotels, you can transfer to both Marriott and Hilton. And then on the airline side, there's a long list, but uh, Aeroplan is one of them. You can also transfer to Etihad. You can transfer to British. Okay, so what's the way that you do this? Because I think Nick does this. I was mm. explaining to Ricky that yes. my brother is the master at figuring out which points are going to go the furthest. So if I want to book something on another airline, mm -hmm. but my points are sitting on Amex, is there like a calculator on your website or something that I can go to and say, okay, I should transfer my points over or no, I shouldn't because I'm, you know, the, I'm going to lose some value here if I move yeah. them over. There Am are, I thinking through this properly? There's a few layers of understanding, right? Okay. And, and, and I'll kind of walk you through. Um, yeah. When you, when it comes to booking a flight on another airline, there's, first of all, there's a, a few things to understand. There's three major airline alliances, right? So... Mm -hmm generally like clusters or groupings of partnerships. So Air Canada is part of Star Alliance. If you're going to Europe, you might consider flying with Air Canada or a Star Alliance partner like Lufthansa, Lufthansa or yeah. United or something like that. But there's also other alliances, right? If you wanted to fly Air France, for example, out of mm -hmm. Toronto to Paris, that's Sky Team. And so you'd be looking at uh, Air France KLM. flying blue. Yeah. yeah, and KLM's part of the same thing as well. The good thing is Air France is also a transfer partner of American Express. So now the question is, the, the whole process is kind of like, let's say you want to go to Europe, right? You know you kind of have these airline options. Air Canada, Lufthansa, Air France. Uh, you need to kind of figure out which of the programs is going to work for you. That's a process. I would say actually the most time consuming and something that you know people need to wrap their minds around. That's a process known as finding award space or finding award availability, because not every seat that you find online can actually be booked on points. Especially when it comes to business class, airlines will often just release two seats every flight, and then people have to kind of compete for it, right? And if a lot of people are trying to book, you kind of need to be fast or know the right strategies to find those flights. But once you do, um, that's when you know, ideally, once you find the space, you know that if you transferred your points in, you can book. That's when you go onto American Express, go to the transfer page, and then pop in like the amount of points that you need to transfer. And usually it's pretty much instant. You get your points, you go ahead and book. The process of doing all that, that's indeed something that, yeah, that's what we're all about, right? That's what all you, your community, what you've built is doing. You're helping exactly. people navigate exactly. through these waters. Mm -hmm. so, so how do you actually redeem these points? Because I've never used points to actually travel with. Like, is it, is it Look at Anthony just sitting on all his points. Yeah. Eh? So you're not, Anyone you're listening the out there, Anthony's got some points. If Figuring out as they go, man. Sure. When we spoke in January, right, you got, you, you got the credit cards. You have a balance now going. And then how do you actually do it is kind of the, the process I've described. So we, you start with the destination, right? And if you're open to many destinations, that's good because... Uh, because your first choice destination, you may not actually find something that works or that works really well, right? Let's say you find something that you have to take like two stops or whatnot. That might not be the way you want to redeem your points. It might, but you also might be thinking, maybe if I go somewhere else, you know, I'll have an easier flight. So you kind of have to think about what are your upcoming travel goals? Like where do you actually want to go, right? You or your loved ones, where do you want to bring them? Um, and then among that set of destinations, there's going to be a bit of legwork to figure out, okay, what airlines are going to fly there? Which airlines are going to have award space uh, and that I can access using my points? And so which ones are partners with Amex, MR points, or with uh, Aeroplan? The good thing about Amex is that uh, among the airlines that Rowan and I listed, right, it, there's coverage across all of the three major alliances. So Aeroplan is Star Alliance, Air Canada. Um, British Airways is One World, and Air France is Flying Blue. Now, I think in a lot of the conversations, we tend to focus on Aeroplan because it's just the simplest place for most people to start. But once you get to the level of also wanting to consider these other alliances, there's easy access from American Express still, right? So the, you know, yeah, to, to really go through the exercise, you know, if you, 
if you have a place in mind, I can kind of share what uh, Italy would be. Italy when? Like next summer? Um, or? September 2024. Okay. So generally speaking, uh, bringing you back to the award availability puzzle that I talked about, right? The best time frames to book are generally as far in advance as possible or like very, very close to departure. And that uh, goes back to some of the economics of how this whole game works that we talked about last time, right, in the in the first episode. So if, if you're in a position to book stuff this month or next month, right, September 2023 or October, then now's definitely the time to start researching, okay, which airlines can I actually fly? Uh, and then looking up the space on their respective websites, right, and then seeing if there's space, then you can go and transfer your points. Now I can help you with the research process because I already know off the top of my head that you can fly, right, Air Canada, Lufthansa, or Air France and KLM uh, with uh, with SkyTeam, or in case of uh, One World, it'd be like British Airways out of Toronto, that would work as well. But, you know, for, for somebody who's delving into it, there might be a bit of a research process to figure those out. There's certain tools you can use, right? There's a website called Flight Connections that I'll show you, like, on a map which airlines will fly. Take care of that stage, and then once you find the space... And how early can points. he book? Nine to 12, so you can book uh, about, yeah, 350 to 365 days. It varies depending on the program of the airline that's flying. Generally speaking, that's when the most space will be available, the easiest of a time you'll be able to find the flights that you need. Generally speaking, if you book 10 to 12 months in advance, that's pretty much the case. Uh, once you get to like two, three, four, five, six months out, you might find that all the space has been booked up and it might just be more challenging to find like the right date that has space or like a, a right flight that you still have to add a few connections on to get to your final destination. Um, but then, like I said, once you get to about two weeks out, the airlines release a bunch more space that you can also book if you're- I didn't know that. So they release more space and do the prices drop at that moment because they're like, we're not gonna fill this flight? The prices generally are fixed uh, or they, you know, generally it's fixed or there's also what's known as dynamic pricing, which in some cases it'll be ridiculous prices uh, that you generally don't wanna pay attention to. But yeah, they don't generally drop the space, but they uh, they just allow more capacity, right? They they allow more seats mm -hmm. to be booked on points, whereas normally it's fixed at. Oh, two, sorry, two they to release four. more for points. Exactly. Okay. Exactly, but the price doesn't actually mm, drop in most cases. Got it. Got it. What Jeez. actual website are you booking flights from? Like you mentioned, that one website where you're searching for all the different flights. Is there one easy website to go to to just see all the different airlines that are flying there? Like. Um, like, do you just go on Expedia.ca? Like, oh, is, there, geez, is there a simple way to do this? <laughs> Tom's like, Anthony, you're Expedia. Bring, bringing, <laughs> keeping it kind of basic you, here. <laughs> you've, never, you've never got kicked off a flight for overbooking, have you? No, no. Never. Yeah. Ugh. You want is that something that happens yeah. with like an Expedia? Oh my gosh, I'll let these guys are the masters. Let's hear so, them. Yeah. So for booking, <laughs> so when you're booking through Aeroplan, you actually want to visit aircanada.com and that's going to allow you to actually leverage those aeroplan points into an actual booking. Uh, so when you visit the website, you know, there's a search function and you just select, you know, book with points and that's going to show you what's available to book uh, with points. And on Air Canada, you can see, of course, the Air Canada flights, but it will also populate partner airlines such as, you know, like the Lufthansa or the Etihad's. Um, and when you guys say alliance, that's just a bunch of airlines that are in one group where points are transferable to every airline in that group not like just that's, points they're all working together yeah they're working together i i think for the sake of this example i wouldn't say you can transfer all your points amongst each other but yes this like star alliance is a collective of airlines that do work together in like a larger capacity so to to make those bookings you would go to air canada and uh, you would search for the flight that you're looking to book and then the booking process is very similar to as if you were booking with cash but at the end of it you're just putting your credit card information in for the taxes and the fees uh, as opposed to the entire, you know, base fare, uh, the base fare will come from the po from your points. Oh, that's right. Taxes and fees aren't won't be covered on points. Correct. You we can't pay the Canadian government in points. Damn. They do give you an option at the end of of you know the points and the cash split, and uh, usually you want to pay the taxes uh, with your credit card as opposed to uh, your points. One for insurance purposes. So if you're putting your flight on the right credit card, then you will still get like your flight delay, your baggage delay. Uh, you know those type of benefits from the credit cards uh, as well as if you do use points for the taxes you're usually not getting really good value for it either so um, but yeah that's kind of the process to to use to use your points through air canada and it would be similar with um, other other airlines as well and if anthony wanted to use expedia could he i mean then you'd just be buying 
flights the normal way. Yeah, okay, you're not, so, so you have to go to the website of the airline you wanna use to use the points. So either Aeroplan or Amex. Well, Amex is, uh, AM, so yeah, I, I can I can easily see how that's fairly confusing, but Amex, you know, is where your points currently reside if you hold an Amex credit card. But if you want to redeem it through Am- through Aeroplan, you need to transfer them, right? If you're to redeem them directly from Amex without touching Aeroplan, then you're not getting the value that Aeroplan offers. Instead, you're kind of doing what, basically what Tom's doing with was the, the, the worst oh. one, yeah. Which is just a very fixed So just value. keep them in Amex and then just switch them over to Aeroplan. When you're ready to book. But the good thing when about keeping them, when, if you keep them in Amex, right, you can transfer them to Aeroplan or to Flying Blue or to British Airways. Mm. And that's the value of the flexibility that these... So a- a- Amex bring. is like your savings account. Yeah, it's and the then, cold yeah. storage. It's the cold storage. Let's yeah. not get it's cold, cold storage, <laughs> man. <That's not laughs> so I have a question then on the Amex points. If I sit on them for years, do they inflate these things? Oh, I guess you do lose on inflation because the prices are changing and your points won't go up. Is there like a sweet spot where you're like, use some of your points or no? Use just, all of your points as soon as possible. Because they do lose value because over time. Lose value. Because on the dollar cost, just the inflation of the dollars, or do the points go down in value inherently in the point system? The latter. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because the airlines and the banks are constantly, it can change the, the rules at any time because it's their product. Okay. And they do, in fact. So don't sit on them for five years, use them. No. Okay. We, we okay. say in the community, right? Earn and burn. So okay. Earn and then redeem it for something that will bring value to your life. Earn and burn. Baby. Earn and burn. And then do the cycle again. Because otherwise, if you keep saving and saving, then they might change the rules. They might change the number of points that a flight requires. And you really have no recourse because you're participating in their program. Right? Are you going to have a t-shirt at the summit that says earn and burn? I was just saying, I, you, 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 if there's one I, thing I, you're going to take from this podcast, it's earn and burn. He's not going to stop saying it. I want an earn and burn t-shirt. Yeah, he's not going to stop saying it. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Maybe yeah. Earn to, and uh, burn is the way to go. Okay. Uh, Get to earn and burn. So, sure. so you earn all these points. You go to the website directly to use the points. Is there a little hack around upgrades? For example, I noticed, you know, you can, with Air Canada or a bunch of these airlines, once you book, even if you're not using points, afterwards it says, would you like to bid on like, uh, what do they call first class these days again? Business class. Business class. And um, can you, I've noticed you could use points there. Is that an mm-hmm. incorrect way to be using points? Do you get the value there? I would say that's, not as optimized as it could be. And and ideally you would be using points to book business directly to get the best value. Yeah, got it. You can also do that. It's just not the best value. And in that case, right, it's often better to just, because when you bid with points, you also have the option of bidding with cash. Mm -hmm. Right. On the same bidding. And it's generally better to just bid with cash. I would say that bid upgrades are, you know, pretty, uh, an okay way to get upgrades. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's just about like making, like the airline makes all of the customers an offer, right? During the check-in process and some customers will take that. So uh, yeah, that that will, you know, result in some upgrades at some times. There's also what's known as e-upgrades, which for Air Canada frequent flyers, right? If you fly frequently enough on just regular fares with Air Canada, there's a status program that you can be a part of. Part of that gets you e-upgrades, which is upgrade credits that you can leverage for upgrades from economy to business. But overall, right, if people are focusing on the best way to get into the business class cabin or first class, which is a little bit of a separate thing on international flights. Oh, it is? Yeah. Some airlines, first class is like really, really special. Got it. Air Canada is just business. I'm glad to know it still exists. I thought it was gone. I thought you couldn't say first class anymore. But in general, the best way is uh, is to use points directly because that'll get you the best value. I did a little off topic for one second. Is there an airline, a favorite airline of yours? Mine currently, I feel like I haven't been on some of these. Um, I think there's some some airlines going to the Middle East or maybe it's to Asia that are just like super elite. So my favorite right now has been KLM and Lufthansa. Those, because I go to Europe mm. fairly frequently. Those mm. two I love going to Europe. I'm actually not a huge fan of Air Canada. I just find Air Canada's a little rude. <laughs> Canada, sure. Yeah, I would say hit or miss. Hit or miss a little bit. KLM and Lufthansa, I'm really a fan of. It, going to Europe, do you have a favorite airline? And then going to other parts of the world, do you have favorite airlines? Right now, my favorite airline, I think, has to be Emirates. Yeah, uh, I only see the video. I see those YouTube videos of Emirates. I'm like, I need to go on Emirates. You know what? It's they have they have very strong uh, a very strong ground experience and in flight experience. Uh, the service is always over the top, especially if you're in first class. They have a wonderful menu for both food and beverage. And there's just something really special about, 
you know, being able to mingle with other guests at a bar when you're flying at 40,000 feet or, you know, even meeting a friend for a drink at a bar at 40,000 feet. It, it creates a very like lasting and memorable experience, um, which to me has I've always had a, a fun time. For Ricky's bachelor party, you know, we flew in Emirates and we were drinking champagne at the bar just last Can week. Can you imagine I, bumping into these guys at the bar on the airplane <laughs> on with all their plan. points? I plan on it. <laughs> I, I know. I can totally see you there. I'm going to be back in economy yeah, somewhere the, with you guys are all at the bar. <laughs> Anthony, tell me what's going on. I got such a little travel points. I'm in the back. Spare me some points. I'm still cheap. I'll use it for the economy. I just need, <laughs> no, to, no. I just need to get around places. But, you know, it does create really, really nice uh, experiences and... Um, I would say that has to be one of my my favorite airlines and I've been fortunate enough to fly with them a handful of times. So, so you were able to earn enough points to go and do this experience just by living your day-to-day -day life. Absolutely. It's it it's a thought that I think a lot of people have trouble, you know, like coming to. Correct. Like, yes. You, because as you said, it's always been something that works in the background and you don't really think about it until once per year you check your balance. So by by leveraging things like the COBOL card, right? Like all of a sudden you're earning 500% more points going from a one point per dollar card mm -hmm. to a five point per dollar card. And that makes meaningful you know, increases to your point balance. And then there's other strategies like, I've just moved into a new apartment. I need to buy a couch. Well, this couch is gonna cost me X amount of dollars. I may as well sign up for a credit card, like the platinum card and plan out while well, I need to buy a couch, I need to buy a fridge or I'm buying a new rental property. I need to furnish it. Well, now all of a sudden you have all the spend and you have a credit card that's going to give you a hundred thousand point welcome bonus. So now your points balance is growing in a much more rapid succession. Mm. The velocity is going up and up and up. And then now you can afford to book these flights and book these experiences. Is that where the biggest bang for your buck is? Is the first year reward programs? Generally speaking, yes. So, you know, we talk about an 80-20 rule, right? What's the 20% of effort that'll give you 80% of the reward? And sign up bonuses and and other types of bonuses right we're going to get into that is is pretty much where the the you know you can make a bulk of your points earnings from you know relatively little spend right because if you think about how sign up bonuses compared to even day-to-day -day spend it's a different level right so yeah the idea is whatever spending you're you're gonna you know be having um think about how to strategically put that towards a sign up bonus if you have a particularly big spend coming up maybe you're looking at something like what Tom's doing, which is $75,000 in four months. Maybe you have a business, big spends coming up. You can get 200,000 points out of that, right? If you're just a regular individual or do a few properties here and there, and you have like, you know, various properties and various purchases to, that are coming in, then think about, you know, there's offer, there's various offers out there for $1,000 in three months, $5,000 in three months, $10,000 in three months, meet these spends and you get 50,000, 75,000, 100,000 points. So if you you know, continually have a card that that's available that you're able to, you know, put uh, spend to to unlock the, the 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 minimum spend for a sign up bonus. Then your points are going to be flowing a lot freely. Now, if you're not looking to, you know, be juggling so many cards, then that's when you know you might day to day put most of your spend on uh, credit cards that maximize the return, like the five five times the points on the Cobalt card. And then when there's a particularly high sign up offer available on a really good card. And many of these cards rotate through offers, right? So sometimes they'll be elevated. That's when you might strategically choose to sign up for that card, mm. put the spend there, and uh, and you know get. Never the thought back. of that. Sign up for the card, earn the bonus points, transfer the points off of that card. I can cancel the card. You could, yeah, indeed. If you if you had them on your Amex, but you move them to Aeroplan, you can then cancel your Amex, you know, and mm -hmm. then. Um, you got to watch your credits. I, I, I assume there's a whole bunch of things you have to a few watch. More, you have the, a few more things to think yeah, about and pay yeah. attention to, but none of that is, you know, uh, going to stop you from actually doing it as long as you know what to pay attention to, how to manage it, when to. I can you see know, how you can totally get sucked into this and, world. This is awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Earn and burn, Anthony. Earn and burn. Earn and burn. Earn and burn. That's so. Uh, how many credit cards do you guys have on like a rolling basis? They're not going to tell us how many credit cards. Why? Well, because we can't exa <laughs> we can't pin down a number in our head because it's always changing. But I would say probably between. Um, 30 and 40 across Canada no. US Holy across smokes dude. across me I thought he was going to say 6 to 8 yeah, I thought he was going to say 40. 5 30 to 40 but, but here's the thing it's it's myself it's also look at Rowan know, smiling he's just smiling look at these two Ro rookies Rowan's thinking, two rookies across the Rowan's table Rowan's thinking us. like he's got 50 to 60 <laughs> in his locker 
I don't, I don't, <laughs> active though, active. I don't have a number. I just have a box full of them. Wow. Uh, but you got to make active. sure you got, you know, the payments, I guess just getting accepted on these things. You got to cancel some of them at some point. I, f- I got a sense that these guys are buying one coffee and they get a free flight around the world because they know <laughs> they know how to do the points so well. It does. It does. You know, externally can appear like what's going on, right? And it takes a fair bit to understand. So let me offer a little bit of context around that number, right? We've been, you know, we've been in the game for for seven plus years. Myself in the game, in the yeah. game, right? And Rowan's been been around for a long time as well. And we also do this as part of our work. So it's our kind of job to stay on top of what are the best products, what are the best offers. But I would also say we've um, part of that number is because we've taken it very seriously because we're very very uh, keen on achieving those outcomes, right? We've had all these special experiences. We want more of them. We're always looking to build up our points balances and be able to have that flexibility, freedom to travel the world, um, you know, whenever, whenever possible, whenever some inspiration strikes, whenever we're looking for an adventure. So we, we're definitely taking it very seriously. Um, one of the best ways to take it seriously too, that also tie back to an earlier point is uh, involving, you know, your family members, your, your, your spouse, your partner, your, your parents, getting them involved in the game. Um, when you refer a friend on your American American Express card, you actually get points just when they open the card without you having to actually do any work. So your business platinum, for example, is the best example of that. You're going to get 20,000 points for every friend or family you refer who just opens another business card or like, you know, of their own. So uh, think about that, you know, refer five friends and you've got enough for business class. Hmm. Um, I always struggle doing that kind of thing, but yeah. Now yeah. I see it. Can you, Jeez. so if I have the cobalt, but I want to refer someone the Amex platinum, mm-hmm. can I, can I do that referral or it has to be only be the same card? I think there is, uh, there's certain rules of which cards can refer other cards. So I do believe the cobalt can refer the platinum, but the platinum can't refer the cobalt. Like it's a, uh, you, you can refer upwards, but generally not. No. Is, is that that yeah. flow chart you have on your website? We've got a little flow chart that shows like which cards can refer where, and as a result, what's the best order to, to get cards in. So that's something to consult um, if you're interested. Hmm. But So we should never get another card, Anthony, between any of us without figuring out this yeah, we should just, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if somebody, if somebody is in your circles who already has an Amex, you should always be looking to get their link if possible. Right, because then they win in addition to- I wonder what the Rockstar winning. membership, if we could figure out a flow chart where everybody kind of benefits. a thousand people. Well, if everybody just signs up, then it's your turn at one point to refer to the next person. You know what I mean? You just kind of make this kind of yeah. circle of referring people. Yeah, that's definitely a way to do it too. And we find that a lot of- <laughs> He's you like, know, yeah, you, you should do that. Yeah. A lot of people in our community who may not um, have people in their day-to-day lives to bounce referrals off of, right? Being part of the community, they're able to- get to know others and say like, oh, Got let's it. trade referrals. So we both win and we're both better off in the long run. So they join your community. What's the URL to go to, to go to your website for that? So princeoftravel.com slash membership is where you'd find our okay. membership. And that's where we have, yeah, we've got a, you know, we, we've got a free membership obviously, but we've also got a more close knit. And then everyone's community. sharing these tips, referring to each other. Yeah. Like we're all on the discord day to day. Smart. Do yeah. Person get togethers as well. Yeah. So you're getting the first year bonuses and then are you canceling the card after if the benefits aren't worth it for you to keep that card and then switching to another one? Like it doesn't sound like you guys are canceling and a lot of these, uh, especially the more premium cards come with these big annual fees. So like how are you guys playing the game when it, in terms of canceling the card, uh, paying the annual fee? I don't even know when the annual fees charge. Like I just got the TD Aeroplan infinite privilege. I think it's like $600 annual fee, but the ROI seemed worth it from mm-hmm. looking at your website. They had some promotion. And, uh, but I'm like, when do I even get charged of the fee? Do I cancel? Like the fee gets charged. So yeah, let me explain. Um, your, your annual fee gets charged when you open the card, unless there's a first year free promotion, in which case your first year is free. And oftentimes when there's that promotion, it's a great deal, right? Cause you get to try out the card, you get the welcome bonus, uh, and it's free. But unless there's that, you get your annual fee charged in the first year. And the first year is also when you do get the welcome bonus. So generally speaking, there's a strong ROI on that fee. Now, when it comes to the second year, uh, there's no more welcome bonus, right? So then you have to decide, is it worth keeping this card year after year? If there's certain good perks on certain cards, or if the card brings value in a way outside of the fee, take, for example, the Cobalt's five times the points on daily spend, or uh, the Marriott Bonvoy cards, you get you know free nights just for holding the card year after year that outweighs that fee. Um, and there's a few other examples, but in that case, it might be worth it to keep it. If not, it's probably best to to, to cut ties, right? And you want to do that before the second year annual fee hits, right? So that you don't end up paying another annual fee that's not worthwhile. 
Okay. Or you can do it, you know, I think if you, if it hits and then there's a 30 day period that you can also. There's, it's funny you're saying that because I'm actually holding one card that I just hold for some of the benefits. And I think that's the American Express Aeroplan card because that's the one where I mentioned it gives you priority check-in. Like you get prior and, and priority boarding. So you always board zone two. You know, when you hear all the zones yeah. on Air Canada, you'll always board, uh, board zone two. Even if you have an economy ticket, you literally just show them the Amex card and you could board zone two. And it's for, I feel like I'm a walking commercial now, um, for you and eight of your travel partner friends. So you can go with your family or anyone else and you can all board zone two. And when the kids were younger, it's a little less important now, mm-hmm. but when the kids were younger, and they were above like family boarding, you know, but they were still kind of, we were all as a family. I found that very kind of helpful to just get on a flight and get everything kind of stored and that kind of stuff. So I'm actually holding that card. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I should cancel it now that I'm saying this, but I have been holding that card for some of those benefits Yeah, because they've been, they've been handy priority boarding, priority check-in, um, just things that, you know, it outweighed those benefits outweighed the annual cost of that card. But I literally never used it. I don't put anything on it. Yeah, exactly. And oftentimes those benefit cards, you Take the Bonvoy ones, for example. Uh, I don't think either of us put any spend on the Bonvoy cards. We just hold them for the free nights that we get once a year, and then it outweighs that. Fee. So there's there's a Bonvoy Amex or Visa? Bonvoy Amex. Amex, and that, the benefits are you get a few free nights at Mar- any of the Marriott hotel chain. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, at, a, at you know certain categories or a certain number of like points equivalent uh, for 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 Bonvoy hotels. But yeah, there's a personal Bonvoy card and a business Bonvoy card. And those okay. are really the two only hotel cards in Canada that are worth. Okay, my, so Nick has been so good on the Marriott Bonvoy because for years we've been going to conferences and Marriott, I didn't know how many hotels they actually own. Cause even if it's they not just, branded yeah. Marriott, sometimes we're at a hotel and it's, I'm like, this is a Marriott. And Nick does this so well. He'll be at the, like the Marriott gold elite platinum check-in or whatever. I'm at the regular like check-in, you know, <laughs> has a hundred people in line or whatever. Mix at the super check. And I'm like, how are you over there? Like, why am I over here? And you're over there. And he goes, well, we got all these points. I'm like, when you say we, I don't have these points. What are you doing in our business that you have all these points and you're checking it over I think, I think you just got to let Nick manage all totally, of this stuff. Totally. Yeah, he's right. the best let, at this. Let him Hands do down. Yeah. He's <laughs> the best at this. So I wanted to ask about that. Like, how are you using these points for not just flights, but for hotels? Is it using like leveraging the Marriott Bonvoy program specifically? So me personally, I am a big fan of the Marriott Bonvoy program. So we spoke about why do we use Aeroplan in Canada? And it's because it's the most accessible program for us here as Canadians. And similar story with Marriott Bonvoy. Uh, As Canadians, we can get uh, two credit cards that are co-branded with Marriott Bonvoy. And that's the, they're both from American Express. One's the personal version and one is the business version. So inherently it gives us a way to earn points and participate within the Marriott Bonvoy uh, loyalty program. But even if you're not using it for spend, even like if, you're not earning Marriott points, you're just staying at Marriott's because you have the a card that gives you more perks at staying there? Well, not necessarily using the card means we're not necessarily earning points on our, on our day-to-day spending. Uh, but the program within itself, like those cards give us access to earn points within that program. Uh, in addition, you can transfer points from another American Express business platinum card or platinum card or gold card. And uh, also they have the largest footprint uh, internationally, which gives you as a traveler many options, whether you're uh, an economy traveler or you're a luxury traveler or anywhere in between. A lot of conference and convention centers are also tied to Marriott Bonvoy property. So if you're traveling for work, uh, you also end up in those properties quite often. So it's a really strong program to participate in, one for accessibility uh, through credit card programs here in Canada, but also in terms of, well, what properties are you most likely going to stay at throughout the course of a year as well? And does holding that card go above what you get? I noticed with the American Express uh, Platinum card, you get a Bonvoy elite or gold, gold membership goal. Okay. Gold membership numbers, which, which now I have this freaking number. Is that having that number different than having a Marriott Bonvoy card? Yes, it is. That okay. is your Marriott Bonvoy membership. Okay. And this is your Marriott Bonvoy credit card, which allows me to earn more Bonvoy points. Exactly. Okay. So the membership number, cause I noticed Anthony to your question. Now I'm learning a little bit when we were going to book a Marriott hotel, I could transfer some of my Amex, Amex points to my Bonvoy 
membership number mm, yes. and book Marriott with it, which I was almost going to do the other day. So it's like Aeroplan, how you have exactly. an Aeroplan account yeah. and then yeah. okay. that you That's the Mar- account. Got it. But the Bonvoy credit card is allowing me to earn more Bonvoy points. My question w- would be then, you said you don't use some of these cards and I think you mentioned you don't use the Bonvoy card too much. So is there some other benefits of just holding that uh, Visa or whatever the Bonvoy card was? Yeah. What, and so, what are those? So for example, like we, we talked about how on some cards you have multipliers. So if you are charging your Marriott Bonvoy hotel, charges to your Marriott Bonvoy card, you are going to enjoy a, an enhanced earn rate. Oh, got it. Right? So that's one way that you can earn points on your spending with your Marriott Bonvoy card. But for myself personally, and I think a lot of people within our community, the benefit that they get from holding that Marriott Bonvoy card is every year when you renew it at $120 or $150, you get something called a free night certificate, which can be used for a hotel up to 35,000 points. And then there's another part of that program you can also top up with an additional 15,000 points. So effectively, you can use that free night mm-hmm. certificate, which you've paid $120 for renewal fee mm. for a hotel that can co- that costs more, and then you experience that benefit. So a real life example is a month ago, I stayed at the W Toronto. It was 45,000 points. I used 35K free night certificate plus 10,000 points. And I stayed in a hotel that would otherwise cost me $500 per night. Hmm, For basically 120 bucks plus a little bit more. Correct. Are you ever in a situation where you want to buy points from somebody else just because, I don't know, it's it's cost effective in some way? That you're short 10,000 points, you don't have them, I have them. Is there, is there like an exchange in your community where people move around points or not so much? There's, uh, you know, the exchange between pe- between members is, is, you know, a little bit difficult to pull off. Okay. Now, if it's, now, if it's your, um, you know, your family member and they've got some points in their account. Now, most, most programs have some ability to like share points, right? If you're looking to do deals, that's technically against the terms and conditions. Oh, is it? Programs. Okay. Uh, doesn't mean it doesn't get done, but it doesn't mean it's against the terms. So, you know. Yeah, got it. So, so anywhere you guys travel you're and you need to stay in a place, you're looking at Marriott first to stay in. Generally speaking, it's one of the main programs that we, we focus on because it's the main program that really Canadians have access to. Uh, and when we say have access, we mean through like a credit card or through American Express points because there's those partnerships in place. So we'll look at Marriott. We'll see if there's any points deals that make sense. If not, then we look for, you know, a favorable uh, deal just paid the normal way, but that, you know, we, we're, we're okay with. And then we know that if we put that charge on our Bonvoy credit card, we're getting, you know, maximum points back and we're working towards our status, right? Which also means that just the mm-hmm. more nights you stay, the higher status you get. And then when you have like Nick, status, like Nick, exactly, who's got the, got the highest status. And, platinum, <laughs> and, and that allows you to like take it back to Rowan's W Toronto example, right? He would have, you know, paid $120 annual fee on the, on the Bonvoy card, use that free night to get, uh, a room worth five hundred dollars, and then used his status to get an upgrade to a suite that would have otherwise cost like two thousand dollars. That's how, when you participate, right? When you look to look to squeeze mm-hmm. out these gains, you actually get very significant extra experiences out of the the work you've put in. That's what kind of attracts people. So there's long term value to sticking with with Marriott or. I'm surprised at how many hotels are Marriott. Mm-hmm. You know, even in Europe. You'll go to a lot. Some of them look like boutique hotels. Mm -hmm. And then you realize you're like, oh my gosh, this is a Marriott hotel. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say Marriott on it. But then after it's logging in or, you know, when you're about to book, you realize it's a Marriott hotel. Yeah. There are so so many Marriott. So this card seems like another great addition to like a minimum portfolio, right? Because the one night stay pays for the the whole ROI. Mm -hmm. And it's, it it covers, you know, your hotel strategy, right? If you're thinking about like the minimalist credit card portfolio in in Canada, it's really the only meaningful hotel credit card uh, worth getting. And then you've got, you know, some way to optimize whatever hotel stays that you're doing. Okay. So what's next? So there's the Cobalt, then there's Mm -hmm. the first year reward programs. You kind of can constantly switch to take advantage of spends or just to keep those first year bonuses coming in. There's the Marriott. Is there another next best addition? Did we talk about the, okay, so first year, the, the first year free cards, that covers some of your Visa MasterCards that you can switch, and you can also use when uh, the vendor doesn't take American Express. Um, I would say 
I would say the next level to that would be start starting to explore some of the uh, One World and Sky Team programs that we you know briefly touched upon. You know, the the, the first level is kind of Aeroplan and American Express ecosystem, but once you get into you know British Airways and One World, and that's where uh, RBC's program comes in. So RBC Avion has transfer partners into British Airways, into uh, American, into Cathay Pacific, and that's not anything different than what you do in aeroplane it's just a different set of airlines that that you can have access to have you know that you can book that you can look for space on opens up your range of options for flying and these programs all have different rules right in terms of how many points things cost so that's where we can get into sweet spots where it's like if you're going to this destination it's actually going to be better to use let's say mm, okay, vancouver, vancouver tokyo it's a great aeroplane sweet spot if you can find the space fifty-five thousand points right whereas one world would charge more but let's say something like uh, montreal to doha with qatar airways and one of the world's best business class that's the q suites right that's the really nice looking and the service and champagne is great as well that's seventy thousand british airways uh avios which if you used aeroplan it would be something like a hundred and ten thousand points mm. so it's actually better to use the british airways ecosystem for that uh, if you're going to the middle east or africa or india that's a great sweet spot so the next level is kind of learning all the different possibilities of doing things and then getting the points uh diversifying a little bit right once you get familiar with one program you want to also dabble in others and diversify and then and then when it's time to book a trip you have access to all these possibilities instead of just one program where if it doesn't have anything on your dates you're kind of you're kind of screwed okay so the next level deeper is really optimizing for destinations and their partner airlines and that would be like an rbc avion program yeah rbc avion is i would say the the next level of the game after yeah. you've kind of dabbled in and mastered uh aeroplan and american express to something. damn i had an avion okay. for so long i think i just let it all go and let all those points go. <laughs> so uh, for Aeroplan and Amex, are there better destinations than others then, generally speaking, for Canadians to fly to? On a relative value basis, like what's the best sweet spot? I would say something like um, uh, in terms of the number of points things cost from east from toronto or montreal to going to europe is generally fine uh going to asia and southeast asia is also really good value the challenge at this particular moment in time is it's just really difficult to find award availability right now um just so that you know setting listeners expectations i mentioned finding award space is a big piece of the puzzle right now because you know the aviation industry is still kind of recovering from some of the issues it's had over the past few years especially trans-pacific it just may be challenging to find the space. If you're looking 12, 10 months out, you'll still be able to find space, you know, as as airlines release them. But just know that, you know, it it's, might be a little bit challenging to find the right flights. But if you do, that's the best value that you're going to get for your aeroplane points compared to, let's say, um, Europe, rest of Middle East, Africa, India is a little bit, you know, not as strong value. But, uh, you know, if you're booking business class anyway, it's still obviously going to be great value compared to paying cash for that destination. And one more time quickly, how do you find those award, uh, what did you call them? Award? Award seats. Award seats. Yeah, basically which seats are available to book on points. Yeah. Yeah. That so the basic way is you go on the websites that we talked about, which is just aircanada.com for Aeroplan. And then there's a few other tools, right, in the process. And that's something that we also get really deep into the community. Like what's the easiest way to find these seats? Uh, Got it. So you guys are sharing tips on, hey, when you go to Air Canada, also do this. Yeah, because if you just go on Air Canada, you've got a day by day search and you kind of have to click through the days and scroll through all the mm -hmm. results. And there's tools out there that will basically show you, you know, a whole range of dates uh, in much shorter time. Uh, and there's there's a few. There's called like seats.arrow is one. There's one called um, roam.travel. There's a few that have sprung up recently. Got uh, it. That, and That's they, useful because I guess, is it possible to go to Air Canada's website, find the flights you want, and then figure out that it's not available on points? If they show up on aircanada.com, when you it's, check, when you check use aeroplane points, then you'll be able oh, to Oh, so you check use aeroplane points at the beginning of your yes. search? Uh, that's oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that. For some reason, I thought it was at the end where you're like, I want to pay now and yeah. I want to use aeroplane. At it's, the beginning. It's at the beginning. Smart it's a by them, of course. Different set of search results, right? Okay. Huh. 
So just, I, and I just want to make sure I'm clear. If someone was starting out, I guess the good combo is that Cobalt Amex card. I'm just thinking if I repeat this to someone, it's Cobalt Amex card. You get a Visa card because Amex isn't going to be used everywhere. And the Visa card you guys seem to like is the Aeroplan Visa by one of the banks because you're getting Aeroplan points. Mm-hmm. Uh, TD Aeroplan TD, Infinite, right? TD Aeroplan. TD Aeroplan Infinite or, or Privilege. CNBC Aeroplan Infinite or Privilege if you can, you know, justify that fee and get an extra bonus or the business card if you... Or the business the business and, card and the and reason the th- for that is you want to kind of pool your points together right so your amex points they're transferable so they give you a lot of flexibility in how you can use them um, and we've already stated that aeroplan is one of the strongest programs you know for us here as canadians so it makes sense to get those aeroplan co-branded visas as opposed to uh an in-house program like you know the TD Got it. TD rewards because then you're spreading yourself a little bit too, too thin. thin. And the third card, sorry, just to, to put a cap on that, third card would be a Marriott Bonvoy Visa by from one of the banks. Would that be a nice th- like? I know that's very simple. Sorry, Marriott Bonvoy American Express. Sorry, oh, it's yeah. an American Express. Yeah. Okay, so Cobalt. The other American Express is the Marriott Bonvoy American Express, and then throw in one of these visas for Aeroplan. And if someone was going to start with three cards, that could possibly be a nice way to come out of the gates. That's a perfectly good place to start. Get a sense of right how it works to put strategically put your spend on the right cards. Um, you know, get your points pulled into American Express on the Cobalt, but then eventually into Aeroplan, combining with the ones you earn from your visa. Hopefully get a redemption under your belt, see the fruit of your results, right? Actually understand that this is a real thing, right? Once you travel, you have a real experience that you can actually think of in your mind. Okay, I've done these credit cards and now I have this travel experience. And that's a great foundation on which to take things to the next level. I want to see Rohan at the bar. Yeah. I've never yeah. been on a plane with a yeah, bar. That's a few so levels I, up. Yeah. Rohan, one day I hope to graduate to your level and see you at the bar. <laughs> I would love to see you there. We'll go bar hopping in the sky. Oh my gosh. Earn and burn. Earn and burn. And burn. <laughs> Huh. Anthony, what else? So you- yeah, so aside from the first year bonuses, the daily spend, the Marriott, um, you mentioned the two player mode. I think what you guys call it, right? Referring people and stuff. What uh, what else is there? I know there's like the Aeroplan e store where you can yeah. kind of go through before you do your shopping purchases. You're going to do anyway. So any any time I buy something on Amazon now, I go to Aeroplan e store, click the Amazon link, and then they give points for every dollar. Sometimes it's like four points per dollar or mm. eight points per dollar, but usually it's like one point per dollar, right? Um, what other tips are there for racking up points? I would say like for me, where I found a lot of success is welcome bonuses are a really nice flashy way of enhancing your points balance but for to be here in i always say it's a marathon it's not a race right so to be here long term you want to develop earning strategies that will be with you for a long time so things like using the category multipliers the e-stores these are ways using the right credit cards these are ways that i've been able to earn points over the long run and keep my balances top top. okay so a category multiplier would be like on the cobalt card i think if you get groceries or dining or something right there's like a multiplier that comes in on that cobalt. so just really paying attention to those category multipliers and yeah. taking advantage correct and on the t and on the td cards or uh, you know, there's also like a two times points for gas, I, I, if I remember correctly. Like, so it's just about okay. spending on the right cards because then your day-to-day purchases at the end of the year, they, they will add up and they will give you that long-term points earning capability versus a lot of the welcome bonuses, sometimes they're one and done. So it's important to kind of make sure you're leveraging these tools like the e-stores, like the categories, using the right cards. And um, when you get into one and two player mode, you can start referring to your your second player, your third player, or even friends. These are also really good ways of consistently earning points throughout the year because you're you're earning points in more than just one point per dollar every time you're putting something on the same credit card over and over and over. Okay. You, you guys alluded to the sorry, Anthony. I'm going to have to mm-hmm. run to that team meeting in a second, but I want to talk about the summit because now I'm interested in this thing. <laughs> Let's go, man. <laughs> um, the, um, between family members. I knew it, I'd get you to come to this. It, it, with being family. Tom, you have to come. It, 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 yeah. Between family. <laughs> I freaking knew it. Between family. Aiden's going to, my son, I already know. He's he's going to be like, Aiden. what are those dates? I'm coming to this thing. Um, the, if there's an earn and burn t-shirt, then maybe I'm there. Um, <laughs> I'll make it happen. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, between family members, if people are earning and they have multiple, let's say, cobalt cards, you did say that it is possible to transfer between family members because something just hit me. I'm like, oh my gosh, if multiple people are earning on the cobalt card and then a flight is booked and you're going to use aeroplan points 
can you each transfer to use those? You know, because usually in our family, it'll be one person that's going to be doing the booking, mm-hmm. or is a travel agent involved that's going to be doing the booking for us? Mm-hmm. How does that work? I guess only one person can send their points for that particular booking. So, um, on the bank side, you generally can't combine points between people. Okay. But on the loyalty side, most programs have a functionality for doing that. So, Aeroplan has what's known as family sharing. They've actually made it very simple for family members to pull their points. And once okay. you set up the account, it's just, it automatically pulls. So in your oh, case, got it. You know, you, if you convert all your points to Aeroplan and if your family members convert all their points to Aeroplan and you guys are linked in a family sharing account, then that yes, achieves what you're saying. Okay. So Everybody I probably don't have a family points. sharing plan and should look into that. You should look into getting okay. that set up. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was missing. Now I get it. Cause I'm like, everyone's earning all these points. And then on a family sharing, from what you understand, can you do that with existing Aeroplan uh, points or does everyone start from scratch? Yep. So whatever you have right now, you, if just, you set up the account okay. and they just add up all the totals and that's like the Got number it. you see. Got it. Okay. That's something for us to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then when you make a booking, it will pull from all of those accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Okay. Cool. Anything I have to run off. To yeah. This, but I, I, I want them to share about that some inside. I know you're going to. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll keep rolling. Guys, we'll thank rolling. you so much for this. Of course. Yeah. Thank you, Tom, thank for you. being on. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay. So we've, we've covered kind of the overall strategy, I think like the, it's the category multipliers. It's the first year bonus points. It's, uh, having maybe starting with that minimalist portfolio to take advantage of everything. What are some of the other perks and bonuses, uh, that come with these cards that people maybe discount, you know, they use these as like selling points, like, uh, the car insurance, the medical insurance, you know, the travel insurance, I think Amex has travel credits, which ones are actually worthwhile and which ones are just like marketing to get people excited. Like there's a lounge access, like which ones have you guys found actually useful to have? If I had to pick one, probably lounge access. I think that's a really uh, compelling way for people to actually start unlocking experiences because, um, you know, when we talk about that minimalist portfolio and your first redemption, right? Your first redemption, you may decide to go for economy because, you know, you have a modest points balance and if you just need to take a trip and especially if it's not far away, right? You might just spring for economy, but before your economy class flight, you can still, with the right credit card, get access to a lounge. Right. And then that's where you can, uh, you know, enjoy some free food and drink and enjoy a nicer ambiance than staying by the gate. Is it all free food and drink inside the lounges? Uh, In general, pretty much. Yes. You'll get all the, you know, all the foods generally free. And then, uh, you know, the bar, most of the stuff is going to be free. And some lounges are going to have a little upcharge for the premium liquors. But, you know, for the most part, you can get a nice buzz going in the lounge. That's a that's a nice way to, like, kick off the flight and, you know, have a pretty uh, smooth experience for the rest of rest of your journey and just kick off your trip on, on the right note. Well, it allows your vacation experience to start at the airport as opposed to starting at your destination. Oh, I like that. So uh, for me, that's what really drew me in. Like, I was pursuing that free bag of chips and that free beer when I started. So the lounge access has really helped. You know, you get dropped off at the airport and my vacation starting now. Um, so so how early are you guys going before flights? Are you going extra early so you can go to the lounge or just as early as you normally would, like, you know, two, three hours for an international flight, but you're just chilling in the lounge? Go, go when you normally would. I think if it's your first time at a lounge, it's something that you might want to savor. So you might like budget a little extra 30 minutes or so. Um, otherwise go as you normally would, but there are certain lounges in the world that are really, really nice, right? We talked about the difference about between business class and first class briefly. First class lounges is where instead of a buffet, you get a la carte dining, right? You, instead of like chicken, uh, tikka masala, you'll get like a nice steak that you can mm-hmm. order. Instead of just a regular shower, you'll get a bathtub or a hot tub in the airport. That's another one of those bucket list items. A hot tub in the airport? A hot tub in the airport. That is, yeah. that is the very, very special. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So how many of these airports actually have these lounges? Like, is it just the big international ones? And, and what are the lounges you guys are using on, on a regular basis? So I would say if you're flying in business class or first class, uh, the airline that you're flying with your carrier, they will have their own dedicated space or they will partner uh, with another airline to give you access to those lounges. Uh, And yeah, the best ones are going to be in the big international uh, airports. And especially uh, like if you're flying with Qatar, you know, you want to kind of fly out of Doha because that's where their grand experience is going to be the most enhanced. Uh, Otherwise, 
you know, put your priority pass will get you into a lot of like the secondary lounges that you can be found in both domestic and international uh, airports. And uh, depending on the airport, you know, they can range from a very basic experience where it's just, you know, limited seating with a small selection of snacks all the way up to uh, like a buffet um, and an, an open bar. Okay. So Pearson has lounges set up that you guys use on a regular basis. Yeah. So there's going to be uh, Air Canada Maple Leaf lounges, right? Which is run by Air Canada. And if you have business class or you have status, or if you have the premium credit card, you'll get access. Um, that's if you're flying Air Canada or their partners. Right? So that would be Star like Lines. not the Aeroplan Infinite. That would be the Aeroplan Infinite privilege. Privilege. Yes. Or the American Express Aeroplan Reserve, one of those cards. Okay. Um, and then there's also what's known as the Plaza Premium Lounges at Pearson, which is, uh, you know, its own lounge group. And that partners with major credit cards like American Express. So that's where, you know, if you have the American Express Platinum card, you can get access to that lounge. Uh, and that's also another nice space to, to, to go before your flight. And there's both of these, I think, in both terminals one and three. Well, actually, Air Canada would just be terminal one, right? But then Plaza Premiums at both terminals. And then they have lounges in all the domestic uh, US and international areas too. So no matter what you're flying, you'll from Toronto, you'll have an access to a lounge if you have the right you know. So even if you're flying economy, then you, mm -hmm. but you have these cards. If you have the card, you'll get in. You're good. And yeah. it's the free food, the free drink, and sometimes the occasional hot tub. Those are the perks. Uh, not, maybe not here. <laughs> no hot tubs you here. Get, you get a shower though. Okay. So is it, uh, is it Dubai and Qatar where you're just get, having the most balling experience pretty much? Yeah. Qatar Airways is the hot tub. Uh, Dubai's lounge, the Emirates lounge is, is very, very big. And that's one of its selling points. Uh, it doesn't really have like a uh, flashy things beyond that, but then there's other things, right? Like in, um, in Frankfurt, Frankfurt, you've got a separate terminal. That's the lounge. It's just, it's its own building. It's a private check-in area. And then you get driven to the plane in a Porsche once you are done, right? Once it's time to board. Same with uh, Air France and Paris. How do you get that? Like, wait, it's just a uh, So that's actually, that's, yeah, that's one of the more accessible um, so we talk about levels of the game, right? We yeah, talk I can see how you go deep. Right? You just start getting excited. Oh, there's a Porsche. We talk about the credit cards. And on the redemption side, there's also levels, right? You start off with an economy class free flight, right? That gets you started. But then you get business class. That's a live flat seat. But then you get first class, which is these really, really special experiences that are, you know, once in a lifetime things that most people don't ever get to experience. And that's where we're start starting to talk about things like getting driven to your plane in a Porsche, right? Being made to feel like a celebrity, just like... Hey, you know, here's here's your boarding pass, and then you just get walk up the stairs and board your first class seat. That's wow. Lufthansa first class out of Frankfurt, and that's I would say one of the more accessible such experiences because there's other ones that are harder to book. But since it's Lufthansa first class and Lufthansa is a partner of Aeroplan, right? That starts at ninety thousand Aeroplan points one way, Frankfurt to uh, somewhere in the United States because they don't fly first class to Toronto; they only do business. So. Once you get to that level, you kind of need to be going out of your way a little bit just to have the experience. You know, it's not maybe not for everybody, but if you're somebody who's going to relish that experience, then absolutely worth it. Do Canadians generally have a good points program compared to other countries? We're in a bit of a unique spot because uh, Aeroplan is one of the stronger programs and, you know, it's it happens to be Canadian. So we get to participate in it and benefit from the upside. Oh, sweet. At the same time, our credit card market isn't as big as the United States, so we don't have as many options. And, uh, and that's also why a lot of us dabble in the US side and get some US cards just to expand our range of what we have access to. Going back to levels, that's like a few more levels down mm -hmm. the credit card. So path. you guys have Canadian and American cards. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have some crazy numbers. Yeah. And how are you just balancing and keeping track of all the annual fees? And if you're using them, like, do you have just a crazy spreadsheet set up to track all this stuff? You want to talk about staying organized? It's like, yeah, it's a it's big a thing. a whole nother challenge. Yeah. Being, staying organized is, um, so whenever I talk to people about, you know, earning points, I always say you need to start off by being organized because it can very quickly unravel in terms of making sure you're paying your bills on time, you know, making sure you're canceling your cards uh, before your annual fee hits, you know, being aware of how much you're paying per year, right? Because it's all about ROI. So uh, it's just, for me, it my spreadsheet's very organized to me, but if I showed it to someone, it would look like complete chaos, I'm sure. <laughs> but that's the first place you want to start, right? Like from your first from your first credit card, you put your first line item down in your Excel sheet. I got this card. I got it at this date. This is the bonus. This is when the annual fee is going to hit. And then you just continue to build that sheet out. And then and then that will keep you organized and that will keep you successful. Hmm. This seems like something that compounds. 
like as you get more knowledge, obviously it compounds and you, you can do more things because you know how to do them. But does it compound in different ways? Like I guess Marriott, you can build up your status and then you're getting all these upgrades. You know, you're not just getting, you know, the points leverage, but you're getting the upgrade to the $2,000 suite from the $500 one. Like, does it compound in other ways like that? I'd say the answer depends a little bit on your frequency of travel. Right, because the answer will vary depending on if you're somebody who just takes a handful of trips per year, in which case it's probably best to just you know focus on uh, one concentration of you know bank loyalty, bank airline loyalty, and hotel loyalty. Uh, you know we started off with American Express, Aeroplan, Marriott, Bonvoy. If you're somebody who just takes a handful of trips per year, that should be kind of generally enough for you to. Uh, you know, it'll it'll compound within that ecosystem, and that's kind of all you need, right? If you're traveling more frequently, or if you travel for work a lot, that's where you know it, that's going to compound to a certain level. But then you'll also benefit from diversifying, right, and having access to more. And then there may be other uh, ecosystems where such compounding will exist, and you'll get to a certain level there. Uh, one interesting angle of compounding that that I'd like to you know, just go back to, which I think you mentioned a bit earlier, is once you've done a, a few of these and gotten a few reps under your belt, uh, it starts to become you know, fairly routine. Uh, and that's when you start looking at, okay, how do I get even more ROI? How do I get even more bang for my buck, right? It's like that's, buying properties, it's the exact same it's thing. It's the same, same pathway of ascension, right? Down mm -hmm. this, uh, down this multi, multi level game that we're all playing. Yeah, okay, so how often are you guys traveling personally? I don't travel as much as Ricky, but fairly frequently. Uh, I've probably been on 30 or 40 flights this year so far. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, similar numbers and uh, very much, you know, for me, it's some, uh, I mean, organically, I wouldn't travel as much just for leisure, but I'm, you know, I'm somebody who decided to build my life and my business around it. So now I have, you know, a fair few commitments and if there's upcoming, I have, uh, you know, I just came in from team retreat in Mexico over the past weekend. I just had my honeymoon like a week before that, which was around the world to Africa and then Taipei and then back two and a half weeks. And then for the rest of the year, I've got uh, going back to China to see my family for a bit and then probably going to do, you know, uh, Middle East, Central Asia and then Southeast Asia for New Year's. So I'm do, somebody. Do you have a home? Yeah, I live in Vancouver. <laughs> How often are you actually in Vancouver? I, I, I'm there, you know, like maybe half of the time. And I do find it valuable to be home for, you know, concentrated period of at least like a week to two weeks mm. just to get back into the zone, focus on some work things before getting back on the road. But I, yeah, I do mix it up every now and then between home and work and tend to operate in these one to three week blocks of each. So how are you guys juggling work and travel and just fitness eating well, all these different things, relationships. How do you guys juggle that traveling so frequently? That's a, that's a, I think a topic that you can really dive deep into, um, you know, fitness wise, uh, Ricky has been going on like through like this fitness journey of keeping himself in shape, you know, while traveling. So, you know, that means like going on a run when you can sneak in a run or utilizing that hotel gym, uh, you know, wherever and whenever possible. And then, you know, when you're home, just being like really focused on uh, on your health and your and your self care routines, uh, because it's very easy for that to slip away, you know, when you're, you know, on the road. Yeah. Uh, so often with all the traveling guys you're doing, are you primarily using points? to do the traveling aside from paying for the taxes and stuff with with actual dollars? I'd say for flights, yes. For hotels, no. Because uh, flights, first of all, just so that, you know, I think it's also important to make clear, like if you look at the value that you get out of your points on flights, uh, especially if you travel in business, right? It's, uh, it's generally a lot higher than hotels unless you're staying at really nice places, like really nice resorts. So for the most part, um, you know, a flight might get you like five to 10 cents per point in value, just compared to what that business class flight would otherwise cost. If you're just staying at a random hotel in a random city, that might get you 1.5 to 2 cents per point if you're lucky, right? So if the question is like, how is the best way to use your points generally, flights will usually outweigh hotels. Um, and so at my volume of travel, it makes sense to save my points for flying transatlantic or transpacific business class. And then if I need hotels, oftentimes I'll look for, you know, favorable cash deals or just find the best deals so that I can earn points, earn hotel points still. And then when I need to go on my honeymoon, for example, 
and stay at a place that would otherwise cost $2,000, right, per night, like the safari experience we did, that's when the hotel points come in handy. But I'm not just going to splash the hotel points on a random city hotel that'll be like $200 or $300 mm -hmm. per night. Are you using Airbnb ever or no, because just the ROI isn't there? Not me personally. You know, I enjoy it. When, I, when I'm traveling for leisure, maybe sometimes when I want that kind of, you know, Airbnb local type experience. But uh, the, the good thing that hotels offer is that consistent expectations, right? No matter where you are, you know, you're going to get, you know, this kind of bed comfort, breakfast quality, and, you know, just things that go into 4 p.m. late checkout. If you're a, uh, if you have status, that's really useful for when we need to just get, get in some extra work during the day and then check out at 4 p.m. So you just get a nice consistent experience that helps keep you sane as you travel and you're also juggling, right? All of these, uh, all these other work things and fitness and to go back to that question, like I don't have it all figured out, but you know, try, yeah, working on it, try to do well, our it's best. so much chaos <laughs> traveling that much. It's just... a fair bit, but it's also the, the, you know, what, what drives us, what motivates us. Yeah, no, it's, it's an incredible lifestyle and it's one I think most people dream of, but will never achieve, which is one of my questions for you. Like what keeps people from traveling the way you guys are doing? Is it mainly just a mindset thing? Like not knowing it's possible or does it come down to just, um, you know, money thing, location, freedom, time, freedom, like you guys are a digital nomad. So able to work from the road, from laptops and stuff. But, um, so like, how are you doing it? Like Ricky, you're a business owner, Rohan, you work with Ricky in the business. The first time we were emailing each other, you live like you were living in Bali. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Like the whole team is doing it. So like what keeps most people from doing this type of stuff? I think, you know, number one is how are you generating income is, is a big part of it, right? Like you need to be able to sustain, uh, have a roof over your head, have food uh, on the table. So I think, you know, how are you earning money uh, is a really big one. So working for a travel company where you have uh, a lot of flexibility for me has been a big factor in how I've been able to live this type of nomad lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big one. And then I think there's also a lot of like mental hurdles and you know that you need to jump over before you can kind of pack all your bags and say i'm going to go move to indonesia i'm going to go live in bali uh not a lot of people i think a lot of people are it's really easy for them to get away for two weeks on a vacation but when it comes to making like a bigger decision of oh i am going to sell my car or i'm going to sell my apartment or my home i'm no longer going to have that home base uh that's when they that's what's challenging to overcome mentally, but it is very possible. And uh, I think that if someone does want to pursue that lifestyle, like you can do it in baby steps. You can go on a one month trip. You can go on a three month trip. You can go on a six month trip and see if that lifestyle works for you. If you can manage the, the work and the play, uh, then I think it can lead to a lot of exciting experiences and memories for you as an individual. And a lot of growth from within, right? Because it, it pushes you to live outside that comfort zone. So a lot of things that may have not seemed possible for you now seem, you know, within reach. Hmm. How about yourself, Ricky? Yeah, I think it's largely a mental thing. I think a lot of, I just think a lot of people, you know, look at something like this and may not immediately think that it is something that they're able to do or, you know, is, is in the, in the cards for them. And, um, and that's probably a result of a lot of conditioning around like the life that people are supposed to live. Uh, that, you know, is something that I, since a young age have kind of identified and decided like, wasn't for me that I would like to forge my own path and, uh, explore more possibilities. And I've just been trying to, you know, set, set that example, you know, with internally within our team, but also externally in the message we're putting out there that these are all possibilities, especially once you have access to, um, you know, all these ways to save money on travel and elevate your travel experiences that most people, again, don't know about. So we've been trying to put as much out there as possible to, to help people, you know, discover new possibilities and, uh, and not just discover them, but also, um, see through our content, right. That it is possible that, you know, there are people out there living these lives and here are the exact steps that you can follow to actually, uh, take, the, take, start from baby steps and then get to, get, get deeper into whichever direction you want. Right. Cause it doesn't have to be full-time digital nomad, right? Rowan's lived in Indonesia for a while. Um, and he intends to move around bounce around a bit more in the future. I like having a home base, but I still like traveling a lot to, you know, both for leisure, both to, uh, expand my horizons and to serve the business. Right. Um, and so wh whichever way you want to do it, there's, uh, there's, 
there's different ways you can pursue down that path. There's different levels you can go down, but it is about taking action and uh, taking action starts with that belief at the start that you can do it. And, you know, in, in as much as we're able to, we look to champion that in people and look to yeah, empower them to take that first step. Yeah. So that's a huge reason I did want to come to this travel summit in the first place is because I just want to be surrounded by other people that are doing it. Cause I know you just get the rub. Like it's, often it's not even about the specific tips you learn. Like a lot of what we've covered, it's just meeting the people that are actually doing it and be like, Oh, this is just a regular dude. You know, like you're from Oakville, right? Rohan. Yeah. yeah just a regular guy from Oakville. Just, you know, like me, this guy's doing it. Why can't I, you know what I mean? So what, what can I expect at this, at this travel summit? Is it uh, a lot of advanced travelers? Is it uh, beginner travelers coming out? Is there something for everyone? The idea is to build something where there's something for everyone. That's our goal. And that's, you know, what we're hoping to achieve with this event uh, next year, but also this whole series of events, right. That we intend to hold uh, for a long time. Um, I would fully agree with you. You know, we look to jam pack as much value as we can into the speaking sessions and the presentations and the panels and the keynotes. But a lot of the upside to attending for our attendees will always be in the conversations that take place in the hallway, right? Before the sessions, between them and the coffee breaks, nighttime when it's time to mingle afterwards. And that's where people really dig into their journeys, right? What 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 it's looked like for them, uh, what they've taken from the individual sessions that they're going to, what their plans are to implement uh, for their future travels. And I think for somebody who just, uh, who, you know, that's the exact type of person we're looking for at this event is somebody who just wants to get deeper into the space, surround them with like-minded individuals, get some, you know, not just meet people at the event, but get some numbers, get some phone numbers, get some WhatsApps and keep the conversation going afterwards so that you can really build, you know, be part of this community, but also build your own community of people who uh, you resonate with, people whose journeys you might be interested in replicating, right? People who that you find interesting to talk to and, um, you know, keep, keep in touch afterwards, keep coming back to future events, but also keep meeting up around the world because that's ultimately for me, one of the, it's been one of the most rewarding things about starting this whole thing and, you know, doing the content and doing these events that bring people together. It's the fact that I'm now able to also, you know, no matter where in the world I am or uh, what type of experience I'm looking for, uh, I've got like a, a community of passionate travelers who can, who can share that with me and share in the, in the highs and the lows and, you know, that's also in your community. If you're like, Hey, I'm looking to take a trip to Italy, September, 2024, any recommendations? Mm -hmm. You throw the question out there and people just help answer it for sure. Yeah. And we got fellow members who, who have questions as well. If I'm looking for hotel recommendations or activities or, you know, off the beaten path kind of things to look out for, uh, you know, we're, we're always online on the discord chatting away. And then when, when we get together, that's a lot of the conversations that take place in the room as well. Like what, what's been that that, you know, really nice experience for you. And how do I, uh, if I'm interested, get in on that as well. And have you noticed common traits of the people in your community, these, these big, big time travelers and people really looking to live life on their terms? Like what are the common traits that you guys might've noticed? A lot of these people are extremely passionate about what they do and they, they are very driven. Um, and I think it's a good group of people to be around. Even, you know, you want to surround yourself with uh, these type of people have a lot of positive energy and uh, I find that like within our community I can make friends with a lot of people because you know like their path in life it's it seems it's something that I can also look up to or or resonate with and you know going off the beaten path so to speak so I think yeah like there is a lot of uh, strong members within our community that that show character traits that uh, people I want I want to hang around this is just entrepreneurs go-getters Say go getters is a good one. Yeah, yeah. Go getters, but I wouldn't say everybody needs to be of an entrepreneurial profile, right? Go getters. I would generalize that to, to, to your life, your terms. That's one of the reasons I was so keen to come back to the podcast was because I think the message is very aligned with, yeah, the the very common trait that we see in our members in our community is people who, um, just you know don't really want to kind of live a prescribed life and want to you know really design and customize their lifestyle on their own terms. And I think a lot of the, a lot of these people have found uh, points and travel and everything we talk about to be a key vehicle in achieving that. And that's why we see such a, a strong fit and such a strong, you know, that's such a commonplace avatar in our community. It's just, I'm, I'm cut from that same cloth, right? I've always looked to, to carve out my own path. And, uh, and I've just been so happy that we've been able to enable that for so many people as well. Okay. So travel summit, when is it again? Where is it? What are the details? April 26th to 28th, 2024. 
takes place at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. So um, April 26th is our VIP evening, and then that's a Friday, and then April 27th and 28th is uh, the Saturday and Sunday, full day of breakout sessions, panels, and then we've got an evening activity on Saturday as well. Everything kind of takes place in downtown Toronto this weekend. And uh, tickets are on sale, and there's an early bird pricing until September 30th. So that'll be 349 Canadian dollars until September 30th. Uh, use the code Your Life Your Terms for fifty dollars off. Oh, cool! Sorry, awesome. Fifty? Twenty-five? Uh, we could do fifty. Let's do a fifty for you. <laughs> no just, pressure. Just, no just pressure. For you, Anthony. <laughs> There'll be a promo code. I think we'll we'll squeeze that in just for you and your listeners, just because again, I, I see such a strong fit with uh, you know listeners of this profile and really enjoyed the appearance uh, last time and I'm happy to have been able to deliver some impact and just hope that continues. Yeah, thanks man. The breakout sessions I was already looking at have me excited because one is for like rookies. I feel like I might be beyond that stage now. I don't know, two podcasts deep. You might be I'm, between. I'm <laughs> feeling like I'm like, yeah, not intermediate by far, but maybe between. But uh, some of the other breakout ones were cool. It's just like, one of them I think was just how to have the lifestyle that mm -hmm. allows for this. Mm -hmm. And that one's really interesting to me. Like just how the hell are people doing this? Yeah, so we've designed four themes of breakout outs, right? Two okay. of them are more oriented towards the points knowledge, right? We have one that's called uh, the points beginner, one that's the frequent flyer for the more advanced people. And then we've got two themes under travel freedom, which is really the overarching goal that we believe points enables, right? And under, under that, we've got the lifestyle designer, which is really, you know, breakouts oriented around, um, for example, the real estate talk by Spencer and Ashley, right? For example, um, location freedom, remote work hacks, these kind of things that really enable somebody to pursue the lifestyle that they want. And then we've also got the fourth one, which is the content creator, which we believe travel and content, big overlap in the future, right? So a lot of uh, topics to, to be covered there. But overall, yeah, four different tracks, pick and, you know, pick and choose whichever one fits you throughout the weekend. And then everybody who attends gets the recordings of everything afterwards. Wow. Okay. So Metro Toronto, Con Metro Toronto, what is it? Conference Center? Convention. Con Convention Center. April 26th to the 28th. Promo code your life, your terms. And then there's also the early bird discount before September yes. 30th. So early bird before September 30th, promo code $50 off stacks on top of that. Uh, we look forward to welcome you all. Uh, that, that early bird, by the way, is for just the Saturday, Sunday. So our general admission and then our VIP evening Friday, that's, uh, so nine ninety five. I think it's nine ninety five. Yeah, nine ninety five. That includes a Friday night banquet and uh, a few other inclusions, hotel credit as well. That you know, book with Marriott agency. Uh, Marriott is a uh, is a uh, potentially you know um, partner there. Well, we'll we'll see <laughs> we'll see. But uh, definitely, there's lots of Marriott hotels downtown. To yeah, awesome. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Spencer and Ashley there again. I'm gonna drag Tom there. I think Tom's in. I, I think, think we, he's gonna love it. I think he, yeah, I think he's gonna love it too. It's just like a new thing, like. For him, his first question when I started bringing this stuff up was like, okay, but how much time does it take to learn all this stuff? And I was like, dude, I totally get it. But from the conversation we had, and then also with Spencer Nash, it was like a small amount of time invested up front sets you up for those compounding returns for the rest of your life mm -hmm. because you have the knowledge and then you can go as deep as you want. Absolutely. I think, um, I think you know, people don't necessarily need to get to the level that Roan and I are at to see tangible results that will really elevate their their life and their travel experiences. So it's very much along those lines. Yeah, there is a little bit of a learning curve at the start, but with that, you know, 20% of the input for 80% of the outputs, you can, you know, once you've absorbed that, you, there's no more, you know, you don't necessarily have to go further to conti continually and consistently have uh, things like lounge access, things like the occasional business class flight, right? Things like um, this community of fellow like-minded people that can also help you not just in your travels, but because we're all interested in elevating and pursuing life on our own terms, many of the same things that somebody of that profile will also like. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I was watching the travel summit, like promo video on the mm -hmm. website right before this. And I saw, uh, my friend Robin taking a photo with you. I met Robin Valadares. Valadares, Robin Valadares. Yeah. He was at the first one. Yeah. He's yeah. so he was just on the podcast. I met him in oh, Miami no at okay. a Bitcoin conference. There you go. Right? Yeah. That so it doesn't just, surprise me at all. No, yeah. He's a real estate investor you know, Bitcoin investor. And, uh, I saw him taking the photo with you. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, I didn't know you guys know each other. That's uh, it's a really small world. Yeah. Small world. I think just similar people like going against the grain, carving their own, their own path. Like you said, living life on their own terms, owning assets is part of that. Optimizing just what you do in your daily life is part of that. Like these credit cards. And I think travel is a huge part of that too. So yeah. People that are seeking opportunity will always seek out communities like, you know, what we're involved in. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's so helpful to have positive people around you that are actually doing it. Yeah. Just for that motivation alone. Forget all the tips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome guys. Anything else you wanna share? 
Anthony, we'll see you in April. Yeah. Looking forward to it. See you in April, man. Cheers. Pleasure. And, uh, thank, I'll thank get those you guys. Burn so burn shirts made for you guys. Yeah, dude, you actually have to. We'll do that just Yeah, for you, you got to get the t shirt <laughs> just for Tom. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll wear one too. Cool. Okay. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks for tuning in. You can find every new episode of the Your Life, Your Term show on all the major streaming platforms. So Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. And if you'd like to get free copies of some of the books that we've put together, like these right here, or some of the reports that we've put together, like these right here, you can find all of those at www.rockstarinnercircle.com. That's www.rockstarinnercircle.com. That's it for now. Until next time, your life, your terms. Your terms.